Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy, and today I got in the mail the 0.6 millimeter hardened steel nozzle for the Flash Forge Adventure 5M. And I picked this up on AliExpress. I did a video a little while ago about how I was able to get the nozzle cheaper on AliExpress, most likely because I'm a new customer over there. I haven't bought from them before, but I did manage to save a decent amount of money on this nozzle. So if you've never shopped at AliExpress and you could potentially save some money, you can check out the link in the description. It'll take you over there and you will be able to buy some nozzles for this printer from them. So here it is. I have it inside of this nice 3D printed Flash Forge Adventurer uh, storage box. I'll also leave a link in the description to this where you can print it out for free. I printed the top one on the Neptune 4 Pro, uh, Plus and then the bottom part is um, printed on the Adventurer 5M. So inside of here, what I really do like about this box, just check out these compartments where you can just put the essentials, the glue, screwdriver, Allen wrenches, declogging tool, and two compartments for nozzles. So I got here the standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and then in my left hand here is the 0.6 from AliExpress. So as you can see, they look pretty much identical except for the numbers. This one has the 0.6 on it, this one has 0.4, and then the color of the tips of the nozzles, this one is darker. So this is gonna be for the hardened one, and this is non-hardened. But everything else is the same. So, you know, with these printers, they have the quick swap nozzle feature, which means that you can swap nozzles really, really quickly. And the downside is you pay a lot more for the nozzles compared to other 3D printers. So a couple of reasons why you might want the larger 0.6 or the larger still 0.8 millimeter nozzle is because for one, it allow you to print with more abrasive materials. So think things like carbon fiber or wood filled PLA or glow in the dark PLA or just any kind of filament that has some type of abrasive texture to it. And it's not that you can't use it on 0.4 millimeter nozzles. It's just that those types of filaments will wear out those non-hardened nozzles more quickly. And that's why you would wanna switch over to the hardened nozzles because it'll last longer that way. Another reason is that you are going to be printing more quickly because you're pushing out more material. And that's what I'm gonna be trying out in this video. In a future video, I'll get my hands on some more abrasive filament so we can see how that goes. But for now, let's just take a look at the quality of the prints versus the speed at which it took to make them. So let's head over to Orca Slicer and this is what I'm going to print. I'm a really big fan of these big bricks, Lego inspired uh, minifigures that are just you know much bigger than this typical Lego minifigure. And I see myself uh, printing more of these in the future. So I'm gonna print a couple extra heads to have on hand. So right here, I'm using the standard 0.4 millimeter nozzle and I am using pretty much the default profile for this printer. The only thing that's really different here is that I have this high speed PLA filament profile that's really just the temperature changes. So there's no speed changes here. I just changed the temperature for the filament and the temperature for the bed. Over at the quality, these are all going to be defaults. 0.2 millimeter layer heights for strength, the only thing that I've changed is the infill pattern. I'm using gyroid as opposed to grid. The, the default 15% density, I have not changed anything when it comes to speed, but just kind of remember what these, what these numbers are. It's default 200 millimeters for the outer wall, 300 millimeters a second for the inner wall. And then there's gonna be no supports for this, no brim, no nothing. So let's see how the 0.4 millimeter is going to do in this case. So let's slice this file. And you see that it is going to take 43 minutes and 23 seconds to print this. So I'm gonna go ahead and send this over to my printer. I'm going to say, I'm gonna just call this head four. And that's gonna be for 4.0. All right, so I'm just gonna upload that to the printer and we'll get to that in a second. Now let's do the same thing with the 0.6 millimeter nozzle. So I've got the default profile set up for that right here, 5M at 0.6. I'm just gonna transfer the grid, um, the uh, infill pattern from grid to gyroid, only thing that I'm changing myself. And this is just, again, 
default standard profile that comes with Orca Slicer. So if we look at the quality, we see that the layer height is now increased to 0.3 as opposed to 0.6. And if you want to know how high or how low you can go, I took a look at the profile that FlashForge has available on their website for both printers. And when you look at the 0.6 nozzle profile, I have this open in WordPad, you can see here that the minimum layer height is going to be 0.15 and then the maximum layer height is going to be 0.4. And you can do the same thing with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle where the max layer height is gonna be 0.28 and then the minimum layer height is gonna be 0.08. So by default, the 0.6 millimeter nozzle will allow you to get a uh, larger layer height than the maximum allowed layer height for the 0.4 millimeter nozzle. All right, so let's just bounce back here. Standard with the 0.3, everything else is the same. Take a look at these speeds. You'll see that these speeds have slowed down. We're now at 120 millimeters per second for the outer wall and 150 millimeters per second for the inner wall. So these are just all default profiles that FlashForge has uh, developed themselves and they changed everything accordingly, according to that nozzle size. So let's go ahead and slice this. The first one was for 43 minutes and now 30 minutes, 30 minutes on the head. Look at that, 30 minutes in zero seconds. So we shaved off nearly 15 minutes of printing time just by using the default 0.6 millimeter nozzle profile. But let's just say that I was gonna cover this head with like a helmet or something and I really don't care how the head looks. I don't care about the eyes, I don't care about the eyebrows. I'm gonna be sacrificing more quality in order to get more speed. Let's just say I go back to quality and I change this 0 0.3 to 0 0.4. And let's see what we get there. Let's slice this plate. And we have gone down to 28 minutes. So it's not a lot of time saved there. So I don't really think it's worth it in that regard. So I'm just gonna bump it back down to 0 0.3. But I do think that it's still a pretty decent amount of time that's saved off of this Lego head. But need to see how the quality is going to differ between the one that was printed with the 0 0.4 and the 0 0.6. So let's take a look at that now. So here are the two Lego heads that I printed out. One was printed with the 0.4 nozzle and the other was printed with the 0.6 nozzle. About 43 minutes versus a half hour. Which one do you think is the four? Which one do you think is the six? All right, so here we go. This one right here is the four and this one right here is the six. Can you tell a difference between the two? I can see some differences. So one big difference is going to be the layer lines. On the six here, I can see more layer lines that are more pronounced than I can on the four. And then looking at the eyes and some of the detail on the eyebrows, the one on the six millimeter nozzle, it looks like there's a little bit more blurriness going on. It's just a little less clean than on the four. And like I said earlier, those layer lines on the six are just more pronounced than they are on the four. So if I had to pick between the two of these as which one looks the best, I would give it to the four, but that doesn't mean that the six looks absolutely terrible. The four wins, but it's not by a huge margin at all. And so that's why if you're gonna be using a larger nozzle, use it for things that maybe you don't care too much about the detail so that you can just crank it out faster and not have to worry about the, you know, the little small details because maybe the thing that you're printing doesn't have that many details to begin with. So when it comes to these heads, if I were to put like a helmet or something on top of them, then you wouldn't see it and it wouldn't matter. In that case, printing out the six millimeter head would save me time compared to the four. So now let me show another example here. Now this is a Miss Minutes clock from the Loki Disney Plus TV show. And I printed out two of these. So here how she, this is how she looks now. And flip her over on the back. And then there's another Miss Minutes that I printed out as well. 
and she definitely looks a little bit different. So I'm gonna tell you right now, this one was printed with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle, and then this one was printed with the 0.6. And the reason why they look different is because in the slicer, I needed to change the filament at a very specific height, and it was meant to be done with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So the first filament change was supposed to come, I think like at 25, and when I swapped over to the six, I couldn't change it at 25. Instead, it went up to like 25.2. So that's why it just skipped over where these black accent pieces would have been colored in. So man, that's just how it works. So just kind of keep that in mind if you're gonna be doing something very specific. But despite the fact that they look different as far as their coloration goes, let's look at the closer details, the surface details of it. Now, right off the bat, I can tell you that the center part here in this circle, it is definitely not as clean as this circle. Now, this circle looks pretty much perfect all the way around, and there's still some material that didn't quite, um, that wasn't quite even when it was printed out. Now, you can contribute that to the nozzle possibly, or maybe it was just one of those things, but it wouldn't be difficult just to kind of clean that up a little bit and spread that circle out a little bit more. So I can tell you by looking at these two models right here, um, just the, the little bit of stringing aside because they both have some some strings on them a little bit more stringing with with this one with the 0 0.6 but as I'm looking like at the layer lines of this honestly they don't look that much different they really don't just looking at the surface of them where the face of the clock is I can see layer lines in both of them but unlike the Lego head I'm not seeing a huge difference between these two. I'm not saying there's no difference there. I'm just saying that if I just got rid of all of these strings and if these were colored properly and I was looking at them, I would not say that one of them is so much better than the other. Now this last thing that I wanna show you, I'm not gonna tell you what nozzle I printed this with. I just want you to look at it and let me know whether or not you think that this is acceptable to you. So this is a Koopa shell from Mario. Now this is not perfect because I did not add supports in places where I should have added supports on the underside, which is why the underside is looking a little bit gnarly, like right over there. But damage from not having the proper supports aside, let's just look at the surface quality of this. Here's the very top of the shell, all the way around. And what? nozzle do you think I printed this with? 0 0.4 or 0 0.6? And the answer is 0 0.4. That's what I printed that I'm lying. I printed it with the 0 0.6. I just want to screw with your mind a little bit. But yeah, this was done with the 0 0.6 millimeter nozzle. I printed it in two parts and then I glued it together. And I think the bottom part was done maybe just shy of a couple hours. And then the top part was about an hour and 47 minutes. So it's definitely a shorter period of time than if I would have tried printing it with the 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle. But just looking at this here, the thing that stands out to me the most is the layer lines, just like the Lego print. Now maybe it's because this was the same white filament, so I'm seeing some similarities between them, but this red filament is completely different but I can still make out those layer lines on this shell and then at the top you see the ringing that's something I always see when it comes to like these dome shapes when you get to the top even with helmets they're stringing here and these are not things that you can't fix especially if you really want to make it a display piece you could sand these and you can use some filler primer and you can you know make it look just wonderful and perfect you know but just as it is right now I am identifying these these lines and these rings all the way around here. Again, it's not a bad looking model. I just wanted you to see what something printed with the 0 0.6 millimeter nozzle could look like without a comparison to something else so that you can just kind of look at it and judge it based on its own merits and like a, a blind visual test, you know? So that's what that was all about. So I do think it's worth having a 0 0.6 millimeter nozzle for the Flash Forge Adventure 5M because you can save yourself a fair amount of time depending on what it is that you're trying to print. 
And just know, like I said earlier, if you're looking for things with finer detail and you want to see less imperfections, then you're going to go, you're going to want to go with the smaller standard nozzle, the 0.4, or even make it even smaller, the 0.25 that they also sell. But the 0.6 does have an active profile available for Orca Slicer if you're using that slicer. So that'll save you a little bit of time from having to kind of figure out all of the values for yourself. Of course, you can always tweak them, but they are available right out of the gate for you. And if you're just wanting to print something for prototyping or something that you really don't care if you see all the ringing and stuff on, for example, in my kitchen, I've got this really big container that I only use to put um, clean utensils in that are really kind of big and I don't want to put it in the drawer. So I'm thinking things like spatulas, tongs, um, can openers, you know, stuff like that. I have all of that inside of that tall container and it looks good because I printed it with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. But if I had the 0.6 at the time, it would have been done even faster and I would be just as happy with it because it's something like that. I don't really care too much about the surface quality. I just need it to be functional and it's serving its purpose in that regard. So that's what the 0.6 millimeter nozzle is for. These are just a few of the results that I got from it. And I'm going to continue using it when appropriate. And when it comes to just standard stuff, making models, I like to do like a lot of models and things that I print tend to have detail on them. So I'm definitely going to use the 0.4 for that. But for the larger things, I really don't care too much about 0.6 all the way. So if you want to get a spare nozzle, remember if you haven't shopped at AliExpress before, that's where I got mine. You might be able to save some money on your first order from them. And that's how I was able to get this nozzle for like 20, I forgot how much it was, like around 25-ish dollars, something like that. Still a lot cheaper than it would have been if I got it somewhere else, because it would have been like 40. So you want to wait a little bit longer to get it that way, but it works just fine and you can save yourself some money, put it towards another nozzle from somewhere else. So link in the description will be for that. And I want to thank you all so much for watching. Remember to check out the Flash Forge Adventurer 5M playlist that I put together that has all the videos that I made about it. And it will include all the future videos that I make about it, well, in the future. So thank you all so much for watching. Till next time, take care of yourselves. I'll speak to you soon.